Index funds are a type of mutual fund or ETF which seek to track or replicate specific indices. They do this by holding the same securities in proportionate weightings to whatever index they may be seeking to track. Index funds following broad market indices such as the S&P 500 offer extreme diversification by holding securities in large cap companies spread over a wide variety of sectors. This greatly reduces risk. Uncertainty in a market tends to scare away many investors and increases risk and volatility. And now more than ever, there is an immense amount of uncertainty, therefore an immense amount of risk. Many economists are suggesting that the US stock market has recovered much too quickly and is completely unrepresentative of the state of the US and global economies. They are saying the market recovery in no way, shape or form reflects the high levels of unemployment the extreme cross-sector debt, and most of all, the inflation caused by the Feds pumping trillions of dollars into the system. A stunted economy will produce lower or stagnant annual yields. And it's because of this that I think if you're invested in mutual funds with a somewhat high management expense ratio, you should tend to shift over towards an index fund or an ETF with much lower expense ratios. To reduce risk, many are fortifying their positions within index funds and ETFs. I will be discussing and analyzing three different index funds across different sectors that I think should experience substantial growth over this period and in the years and decades to come. The first index fund I want to discuss is Vanguard's S&P 500 EDF, listed on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol VOO, and on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol VFV. They both have extremely small management expense ratios, VFV being 0.09% and VOO being 0.03%. The small difference in expense ratios is largely accounted for in the conversion between Canadian and US dollars. And after currency differences and transaction costs between currencies, most investors suggest to simply stick with whatever currency you primarily use. For simplicity's sake and because I'm Canadian, I will be referring to VFV for the sake of this video. However, all these same principles apply to VOO and VFV. So VFV seeks to track the S&P 500, which is composed of 500 large cap US companies. Large cap, short for large capitalization market, refers to any company whose current outstanding shares are together worth at least $10 billion. So essentially they are large, well-established corporations. VFV is composed of 509 holdings across all sectors offering broad US equity diversification. Large cap companies are considered to be low risk as they have established roots, access to liquid assets, are typically highly diversified and much less volatile than low and medium cap companies. They are also generally companies that have a good public reputation, have been around for a while and have consumer trust. If we take a look here at the 10 largest VFV holdings, these are extremely strong companies that we are all familiar with. They also hold exceptional balance sheets. These puppies aren't going anywhere soon. So yeah, we can see Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, Berkshire Hathaway. That's Warren Buffett's company. So the list goes on. These, these companies are massive. I, I truly believe the vast majority, if not all of these companies, will be able to weather the storm or formulate business models to capitalize from the global health situation. If we look at the diversification across the fund, you can see that over 25% is allocated in information technology. Infotech has seen an incredible surge in valuation since the beginning of the health situation in around mid-March. Another 15% is allocated to healthcare, which it itself is receiving vast amounts of funding and I believe in the coming years and decades, we'll see an even greater surge and importance to the public. VFV and VOO are considered to be by many relatively low risk staples to any well diversified portfolio. And these funds typically outcompete active investors picking and choosing individual stocks. The global health situation has created a necessity 
for distance consumerism, workplaces, and overall life. The information technology sector has seen an immense increase in valuation within the past few months, and I can only see this continuing to increase as brick and mortar stores continue to dive deeper into the online world to fulfill orders and to participate in e-commerce. It is for this reason I think index ETFs holding information technology companies are well positioned to greatly benefit from this health situation. iShares S&P TSX capped information technology index ETF whew, under the ticker symbol XIT, which unfortunately my brain pronounces zit every time I see it, has made huge gains of late. This fund has seen a massive increase in valuation in the past few months, starting in about mid-March. If we look at what securities are within this fund, we immediately see that almost half of the assets are allocated to Shopify. Shopify, if you don't already know, has been the Cinderella story in the tech sector the past couple of years. There is absolutely insane speculative buying of the stock occurring. Uh, at the beginning of 2019, just over a year ago, the stock was valued at about $180 which it itself is nothing to scoff about. Just over a year, $1,200. Um, if you chose not to invest in this stock, you're punching the air right now. Since the commencement of the global health situation and conventional brick and mortar businesses uh, continually sliding into e-commerce's DM, sorry, I couldn't resist, uh, Shopify's stock has skyrocketed. Other e-commerce giants like Amazon have seen similar success stories. Because Zit, XIT, is so heavily invested in Shopify, this fund also has greatly increased in price. So purchasing this fund increases your exposure to Canadian tech sector equity. The management expense ratio is somewhat higher at 0.61%, but that is still extremely low. That's what, $6 on every thousand? It's key to note that no dividends are paid out. However, this is very typical for uh, tech companies. A somewhat worrisome characteristic of this fund is that it is so heavily invested and positioned within Shopify. 43.87%. This is nearly half of the fund's assets allocated into one company. Uh, because of this, any shift in Shopify's valuation greatly impacts this ETF's performance. Uh, so it's almost less of an ETF and kind of just a stock. Although Shopify is extremely well positioned to benefit in the coming years, I do think this $1,200 stock price is way overvalued. However, as long as people's seemingly unquenchable thirst for Shopify stock continues, XIT will also continue to grow. If the fund doesn't divert away from this hefty position in Shopify, I'll consider selling a large portion of my shares fairly soon, but for now, I do see this as a relatively secure position in a very unsecure economy. It's worth noting that Constellation Software, an extremely diversified Canadian software staple, holds nearly a fifth of the fund, and CGI Incorporation holds about a tenth. Uh, both of these companies are well positioned for the future and the new normal I keep hearing about. Cannabis. May have heard of it. I think I've heard of it before. So although the cannabis industry is infused with massive doubt and uncertainty, it also holds massive growth potential. If you want to gain exposure to the fiercely competitive cannabis industry, but don't really know which company to choose, I highly recommend diversifying, reducing your risk, and buying marijuana index funds. Yes, there are even index funds for marijuana. Uh, this is the world we live in. Uh, there are two specific funds I'll be discussing that are more or less the main Canadian and US marijuana index funds. These are Horizons Marijuana Life Sciences ETF on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol HMMJ. And the second is ETFMG Alternative Harvest ETF listed on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol MJ, uh, Unreal ticker symbol. 
I think cannabis has massive potential in the coming years due to recent legalizations, the potential physiological and mental health benefits from CBD, uh, and increasing hemp manufacturing. So many Canadians will be familiar with the rise and fall of the cannabis giant Canopy under the equally unreal ticker symbol weed. Canopy rose to the cannabis podium in 2018, made some horrific missteps, which were pretty fun reading about, and this was all compounded by the federal government's inability to distribute. Uh, they met an unprepared market and resulted in dismal revenue. Uh, Canopy reported four straight quarterly losses, which sent the value of the stock into the gutters. You can see here it rose insanely quickly. Uh, the stock was worth about two and a half dollars in 2016 and by 2018 it was in the mid 60s with uh, over a 2000 percentage increase. This is absolutely incredible and then the next year very rapidly in 2019 the stock lost about 70 percent of its worth. Recently as we can see here there's been a rebound in the stock starting in about mid-March. Uh, there's been over a 100% increase, and this is due in part from a management change and a massive injection of $5 billion from Constellation Brands. They own uh, this beer. Uh, they increased their stake in the company to 38.6%. Constellation Brands is an absolute powerhouse with billions in assets, and this infusion of capital into Canopy really puts them into a unique position. Uh, it kind of gives them a shield of armor, which all of its competitors lack. If the safety net and new management can somehow drag Canopy through the current health situation, I think most of its competitors will fall and the few prevailing cannabis companies coming out the other side should have ample room to grow and prosper. This could result in somewhat of a monopoly of the cannabis sector rising from the ashes in the new normal. Wow. That was, uh, that was poetic. However, when, if, and how these stocks will fully recover, and if there will be a strong consumer demand in a bruised economy, remains quite unclear. To circumvent the uncertainty in individual companies, and to reduce risk, like I've said before, I think it's best to invest into the cannabis market as a whole, while competition between companies remains quite fierce. Investing in HMMJ also gives exposure not only to grower operations like Canopy and Aurora, but also to drug companies using cannabis for health purposes like GW Pharma, which we can see here holds the second largest position in HMMJ. If and when it becomes more obvious um, if there is a specific front runner in this cannabis race, uh, I will consider investing in individual cannabis companies as I do think these specific companies are going to have high valuations in the coming years. It's important to point out that this ETF remains much more speculative than the other index funds. However, if you are a relatively young investor, I think the potential growth opportunity of this fund outweighs the risk. Uh, I think it's a good position to maybe have a small percentage of your portfolio just to gain some exposure to the possible growth of the cannabis market and its high potential. MJ, on the other hand, the US counterpart, has a higher NAV or net assets value, but it holds the same usual suspects as HMMJ in slightly different weightings. So you can go through the specifics if you'd like, but they are quite similar. The assets under management for MJ is 1.25 billion, uh, compared to the 740 million of HMMJ. So these are mid-cap funds which offer higher potential yet come with more risk. So just be aware of this, this fund is a bit risky in this specific climate. In times of uncertainty in a volatile market, it is crucial to focus on companies that have seen it all, have seen it before, and have tons of liquid cash they can dip into and infuse into their company in case they need to do so. It is for this reason that I think diversifying in ETFs that focus primarily on large cap companies is a must. Keep in mind, I am not a financial advisor. Do your own due diligence in comprehending whatever stocks you may choose. 
you really do benefit from knowing the company that you are investing into because you have a feel of what they're all about and you can sense maybe the general direction of the company and consumer demand. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, try to get a little bit more light this time. I think I'm improving a little bit. Uh, still not really a YouTube guy. Anyways, I would like to point out to be wary of the current stock market. Uh, I am invested in these three index funds. I'm not completely out of the stock market, but I am off to the side more so than I have been. A larger percentage of my portfolio is in cash than has been before. Um, just because I am wary of what economists are saying and hinting at that there could be another dip in the stock markets. So just some food for thought, do your own research, do your own homework, and I hope to see you guys next time. Uh, like I said last time, uh, if you could give a, a like and subscribe, I think the kids are saying still, uh, that would be much appreciated. Um, so yeah, leave a comment, let me know if you disagree, if you agree, if you like the content, what you would like to see more of, and I will see you guys next time.